Hello friends, welcome to CrackGate CSE and in this series of computer organization and architecture, today we will be understanding what is CPU pin structure, how the hardware pins are categorized, categorized in the CPU, what is address latch, how it works and later we will be moving on to the memory interfacing. So watch this complete video, this video will be very helpful for you in understanding the a deep concept of memory interfacing as well as this is very important for your semester exam. So watch this complete video and like this video if you find it useful. Now without wasting time let's start with the CPU pin structure. So what is the CPU? CPU is nothing but a processor and we know that the processor contains some set of hardware pins. Why these hardware pins are required? These hardware pins are required to communicate and to perform any operation on some externally connected components because we know that in a system there are multiple components and all the components are connected to each other using the hardware pins similarly we are having pins in the processor using using which the different components are connected to the cpu so that the cpu can communicate or perform any any desired operation on those externally connected components these hardware pins are categorized in three groups these three groups are active low pins, active high pins and time multiplexed pin. So before moving on to these details of these pins, let us quickly have an idea about the clock cycle. So what is a clock cycle? The pair of 0 and 1 is known as one clock cycle and one instruction. One instruction will take only one clock cycle. That means if you want to read, you can read in one instruction cycle. And whatever the operation we have to perform, these operation will be performed by using these clock cycles. The specific clock will be allotted to the specific instruction and uh, simultaneously it will work. So how to find out the cycle time? So this is a clock cycle, but there will be some time for these clock cycles. The cycle time can be find if you, if you have the clock frequency given because there will be definitely some clock frequency that we are using in a hardware and this cycle time is inversely proportional to the clock frequency so if the clock frequency is given us 1 gigahertz let us say that the clock frequency is 1 gigahertz so cycle time will be equals to 1 upon 1 gigahertz and if it is 1 upon 1 gigahertz 1 gigahertz 1 giga means what tends to the power 9 and if we uh, bring it to the upward it will be 10 to the power minus 9 second and 10 to the power minus 9 is known as 1 nanosecond so this is how you can find out the cycle time cycle time and now quickly move on to the active low pins see the hardware pins are categorized in three group first one is active low pin these pins are enabled when the clock pulse is in low state what is the meaning of low state See, this 0 is known as the low state and this 1 is known as the high state. So when the clock pulse is in 0 state, in the low state, then these pins will be activated. For example, it is read, write, interrupt, I think, INTA. So we are having a bar on it. So the general representation of active low pins is denoted using this bar. This bar shows you that these are the active low pins which will be active when the uh, clock pulse is in low state. So if it if we are having a zero, then read will be activated similarly for write and similarly for this instruction. Now what is active high pins? These pins are enabled when the clock pulse is in high state. That means if the clock pulse is one, then these will be activated like INTR, hold, HLDA, etc. So we'll be understanding these pins as well in some particular amount of time in this particular series of computer organization do not worry about that we will be having what is intr what is hold watch what is lda and what is int we will be understanding this as well now what is time multiplexed pin as the name suggests this time multiplex that means it will be depending on the time so these pins are used to carry the address and data but not at the same time what does it mean that it can contain it can carry the address and it can carry the data add as well but there will be some time where the value will be zero and there will be some time where the value is one so when it is zero it will carry the address and when it is one then it will carry the data 
for example here i am having 8085 micro processor so there are eight pins which are used for address as well as data these eight pins are starting from ad0 ad0 ad1 up to ad7 these pins are used to carry address as well as data in 8085 similarly in 8086 microprocessor we are having 16 such pins from ad0 to ad15 where a represents the address and d represents the data so these ale pins is used to operate the time multiplexed pin so whatever whenever we are having this time multiplex pin where we have to carry the address as well as data we have to use the ale pin the ale stands for address latch enable right so when it is zero when the value of ale is zero that means that these time multiplexed pins carry the data and if the value of al is equals to 1 that means the time multiplexed pins carry the data that means if it is 0 it will carry data if it is 1 it will carry sorry yeah if it is 0 it will carry data if it is 1 it will carry the address right do not get confused with it now let's quickly move on to the address latch where will be using this al e so i'll explain you in the memory interfacing that when this ale will be used so what is address latch first of all what is address latch so this address latch is used to lock the address so whenever a cpu want to execute an instruction on a specific address what we will do is we will put that address into address latch this address latch will lock the respective address so that the further execution can be for performed or no other cpu or, or any other device will access that particular address in the meantime so the particular address will be locked for the cpu right this is what written here that it address latch is used to lock the address it contain two pins to control the input and output lines so these two pins are strobe stb is represent represents the strobe and oe represents the output enable this o is nothing but active low pin because there is a bar on it so if stb is zero that means these inputs line are disabled if this is one that means it is enabled because you can see that this stb is a active high pin high means whenever it is one it will be enabled and if it is zero it is disabled now you can check oe o is a active low pin active low means if it is zero then it will be enabled so if it is zero output lines will be enabled if it is one the output lines are the enabled so this is the block diagram of address latch where we are having some input lines and the output lines along with the strobe and output enable we will be giving some ale address latch enable input to this particular address latch which will activate it and let us know that what we have to do further for that now let's quickly move on to the memory interfacing where we will be using this address latch as well as the ale pin of the cpu now here you can see that here we are having the memory interfacing with the complete diagram so we'll be understanding this in detail watch this watch this uh, complete video do not get worried about anything i'll be explaining each and everything in detail so if you are not subscribed the channel till now please subscribe the channel and make sure you press the bell icon and if you are finding this video useful please like this video so what is memory interfacing why it is used so it is used to integrate the cpu and memory so why this integration is required because I explained to that cpu is a word addressable memory and memory is a byte addressable so to provide a synchronization between the cpu and memory we have to use the memory interfacing that's why the integration is required so in this process cpu pins are mapped to the memory pins so here we are having a cpu and here we are having the memory so we will be mapping the cpu pins with the memory pins so here i am considering an example of 8085 microprocessor as a reference in 8085 we have a 8 bit cpu that means the operation will be performed on the 8 bit that is one cell of the memory and it supports 64 kb how because see here we are having 16 pins right so if you find out 2 to the power 16 that will be equals to 64k and it is a byte addressable memory because one cell will be of one byte so that's why it supports the 64 kb memory now 
this is the particular architecture this is a, these are the cpu pins we are having like read write ale along with this uh, time multiplex pin and this address pins here we are using one address latch where we are having some input pins over here so these are the input pins and here we are having some output pins right and this is the particular 64k memory where here we, we are having two control signals read write along with this address pins and data pins i already explained you using the block diagram of the memory now let us understand the working of these memory interfacing so let us consider that we are having a machine instruction which is lda 2040 so this 2040 represents a memory location this lda means load into accumulator the meaning of this lda is load into accumulator and the accumulator is a register which is present inside the cpu that means we have to copy the data from 2040 location from the memory and we have to paste it in the accumulator for further processing whatever the cpu needs to do with it cpu can do so before first of all what we have to do is we have to translate this particular instruction to find out its meaning so what is the meaning that we have to take this address of the memory and load the data which is stored here in the accumulator now for that what is required first so first of all cpu will be generating a memory request to access this particular data because we have to read from here and store here so we have to generate a read request so cpu is generating a read request by putting address here and the control signal so we understood that how the cpu uh, generates the memory request so same thing is going over here along with address it is sending a control signal so that the memory will understand what we need to do with this particular address location now there are some uh, cycles that we need to require to perform any instruction right so why these cycles are required these cycles are known as machine cycles because the uh, execution of these particular instruction or whatever the instruction we are having so the execution of these particular instruction will take some cpu cycles to complete the operation these cpu cycles are known as machine cycles whatever the time taken to do these particular stuff whatever the instruction we are having that will be known as machine cycle whether it is three cycle four cycle or any number of cycles so this is what machine cycles so i just want to represent you how the, how the things are working so first of all what we have to do we have to send the address for sending the address we will be using these pins right so these pins will be used to send the address but before that we have to send the value of ale so if we send zero uh, let me check it once yeah so if we send zero that means the data lines data is coming and if it is uh, one that means the time multiplexed pin carries the address so initially we will be sending ale as one so at t1 will be sending ale is equals to one so this ale will inform this address latch it will enable this address latch and will say that uh, keep yourself on because we are sending some address using the address pins or the time multiplexed pin so we'll be sending the data see this is 2040 let me write down here so 2040 these are the lower bytes as per the little and these are the higher bytes and we know that the lower address contains the lower byte and the higher address contains the higher byte so 80 0 to 87 are the lower bits so it will be containing 40 and similarly we will be having 20 here so 40 will be forwarded to the address latch and 20 will be so this will keep on sending it to here so 40 will reach here and 20 will reach here so from here we got to know that yes we have to activate the 2040 uh, cell of the memory now the cell has been logged and enabled after the cell is enabled we have to send the control signal that what exactly the memory has to do with this particular address so whenever we are sending this control signal at the time t2 so at t2 we'll be sending ale as 0 which will tell that now the time multiplexed pins carries the data and the read will be 
0 and the right will be 0 for t2 time stamp. So this tells you that if we want to read the data this will be carry forwarded to the memory and if it is 0 that means read will be activated because it is a active low pin. So we got to know that 2040 is enabled and we have to read the data. When it is done, now it is the time to retrieve the data back and store over here. So we are taking T3 and T4. Now again the ALE will be 0 because we have to forward the data from here to here. These are the time multiplexed pins and this D7 to D0. So the cell has been activated, the value has been readed from there. Now it will be forwarded using this D0 to D7 pins that is the data pins. It will be forwarded to this AD0 to AD7. And because ALE is 0, we know that the address, sorry, the pins are containing the data. So that data will be fetched from this particular location and will be stored in the accumulator. Now you may think that here we are having two machine cycles. We are taking two machine cycles because to process the data, the memory will take some time because we have to retrieve the data from here. We have to send it back to here and again we have to store into the accumulator so, so this t3 is for the memory latency or the delay you can say and in t4 time it will be stored so this is how the memory interfacing work and this is how it is integrating the cpu and the memory so i hope you find this particular video useful if yes please like this video because your likes and comment really motivates me to do more video so if you want further videos, please like this video and thank you very much for your time. Keep supporting, keep learning. Have a great day.